You know, I wish this orange juice didn't have big clumps of pulp in it. Hmm. I just didn't have to chew your juice in the morning. This baseball jag, Michael Jordan's on, kills me. I mean, I'm probably a better baseball player than he is, and look at the crowd he draws for this farm team. Yeah, but Michael Jordan's a hero. <laughs> He's also a full-on babe and a half. I guess I have to hope a living legend transfers to Palmer and goes out for baseball. Then maybe we can get a decent crowd at our games. Dad, you could put Elvis on the mound and nobody'd care. We're doing okay there for a while. The people are in the stands. We're holding our own. What happened? Dad woke up from his dream. Don't you have the tiniest shred of school spirit? Brick-a-brack, a firecracker, sis, boom, ba. Palmer School, Palmer School, raw, raw, raw. I hope one day all that sarcasm gives way to enthusiasm for something. Yes, and then my life can become one big pep rally. I'll probably even become a cheerleader. What's sarcasm? Something very annoying that your sister hides behind most of the time. And since you brought it up, why don't you try out for cheerleading? You can't be serious. No, there's an opening on the squad. The girl who holds up the letter Alan Palmer, she went in for knee surgery. You might be surprised. You could have a lot of fun. You could put all those years of gymnastics and modern dance to use. Do you have any idea how lame our cheerleaders are? I mean, I just know how much the guys really appreciate having them out there. With their stupid pom-poms, bad routines, and incredibly dumb cheers, it's nauseating. If you think they're so terrible, why don't you try out for the squad and use your talents to make them better? I'd throw myself in a volcano before I do anything so fully uncool. Most of the time, being uncool is an excuse people use to avoid doing something they're afraid they'll be bad at. If I wanted to, I could blow those other girls away, believe me. Maybe. No, maybe's about it. I would kill. I'd rather be lame at something than be a blowhard and waste everybody's time with a lot of empty talk. I'm going for a run. Hawaii seven years next February and I still wake up every morning and can't believe I live in such a beautiful place so beautiful here it's just stupid and health wise this place has added 15 years to my life back in Brooklyn I may have been younger but I couldn't jog for miles like this I smoked drank gallons of coffee look forward to my nightly vodka is a little too much never mind all the fat in my diet now look at me I'm gorgeous stop and I'm falling in love <laughs> This swell keeps building. The circuit will be awesome this afternoon. <laughs> We've got to get you out on a board. Absolutely not. Why not? Surfing's a catch. There's just something unappealing about sitting way out there with your feet dangling in the water with no idea what's underneath you. Fish. Yeah, some of which are big, very hungry. It's a little scary, Murray. It's not fish you're afraid of, Sam. What you're really reporting here is anxiety about unexplored aspects of your subconscious. Here we go. Seriously. Uh, I hear this kind of imagery from over-control and type A people like yourself all the time. I'm not afraid of fish. Nope. I think you were at first. Then let's go surfing. No. <laughs> Even though I'm not afraid of fish, I'm terrified of their teeth. No. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you up to tonight? Paying bills. There's a big night. I'm hosting a bachelor party for a pal. Come take a look. Last time you and I went to a bar, we wound up in the Hooskow. Tonight's going to be very sedate. We're going to a hostess bar. A hostess bar? A hostess bar. With hostesses? It seemed fitting for a bachelor party. I don't know if it's a good idea for the headmaster of Palmer School to be hanging out in that kind of place. What kind of place? It's a bar where you buy drinks at grossly inflated prices for pretty girls who sit at the table and chit-chat. How's it going to look? Nothing illegal, immoral, unethical, topless, bottomless, or otherwise salacious is going to happen. 
If I say no, you just yammer at me about my subconscious, and now this is all part of my control thing, and it has nothing to do with the hostess. Now, it's up to you. The truth is, the place is not important. These are great guys whose company I think you'll enjoy. And some pleasant scenery will only enhance the evening. I like my hair. I'm attached to it, so I don't want to do anything rash. I mean, if this were Connecticut, I probably wouldn't do anything at all, but it's Hawaii. So I face two major problems, heat and humidity. I'm hot all the time. I mean, my, my ears are hot. My neck is hot because this hair just traps heat in. You know, and then there's humidity. Hey, Harry, I forgot my lunch money. Can you loan me some? Hi. Fortunately for you, I'm more sharing person than you are. Good, so I don't have to pay back. Humidity. I mean, it frizzes my hair. That's if it even dries at all. So I'm at risk for some strange uh, head mildew. I don't know, like like some weird tropical fungus, you know? What are you asking me? What do I do with my do? I mean, do, do I cut it all off or do I just style it differently? You know, it's something more energy efficient, so I'm not sweltering. Do whatever you like. Crystal, this is a major life choice here. I mean, a guy's hair basically tells the world who he is, what he believes in, the kind of music he listens to, what his values are. Why do you think TV evangelists and game show hosts all have basically the same haircut? I really don't care, okay? Okay, chill. I mean, I'm just trying to ask a friend for some advice. Sorry. It's just that I've got a lot on my mind. I lost the baby. Are you okay? Yeah. Probably just as well. I mean, you can't help feeling kind of sad, but I'm kind of relieved too, you know? Yeah. Not like Junior. He just about started dancing when I told him. Look, if there's anything I can do for you. You're doing it. Try being here for me. Sorry. Well, thanks, Harry. For everything. Oh, I'm the one who should be thanking you. For me, you're the best part of every day. Something's different. Your hair's actually shiny today or something. The only thing the former headmaster ever noticed about me was my wardrobe. Probably because he and I are about the same dress size. You know, I think it's great the old fellow's off cross-dressing somewhere to his heart's content. There's one thing that baffles me. What's that? After all those years wearing trousers, how does a guy give a pockets cold turkey? I, uh, <laughs> I couldn't do it. <laughs> Got any plans tonight? Actually, I do. Anything you'd consider changing? Oh, make me an offer. Well, Kazu Polikiki just got back from a tour of the battlefields of Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. and he's showing slides at his place tonight. Shot over 20 rolls of film at Gettysburg alone. No kidding. Yeah. Mm. There'll be a few folks, some wine, cheese. Interested? Uh, it's very sweet of you to offer, but I think I'll pass. He's also going to show slides he took at Valley Forge. <laughs> Sounds like a fun evening. I thought you'd be interested in all that history. I am, but see, I'm from New England, which is chock full of history. So I've seen plenty of old cannons and statues of guys carrying muskets to hold me for a while. It's like you people over here. You know, ho-hum, another day, another rainbow. Got a hot date tonight? Actually, I'm getting together with Murray. Well, instead of putting everyone to a lot of trouble, why don't you two go straight to the police station this time? Sorry, her. Actually, we're going to a bachelor party. What? Well, no wonder you're turning your nose up at Pickett's charge and little round top. You'll be spending the evening drooling over big round tops. It's a guy thing. Well, I guess I should be grateful I never had to go through any of this with Glenn. I hope you have a lovely evening. Oh, <laughs> uh, Mr. Burton. Hey, Alan, what's up? I got a question. Shoot. It's kind of private. Oh, well, come on in the faculty lounge. We'll like, grab a cup of coffee. Are students allowed in there? No, I think it's okay if you're with me. So how do you take yours? Oh, no thanks. Coffee gives me diarrhea. So, what's on your mind? Well, I want to make sure you're cool with something before it goes any further. I mean, since you put yourself on the line, let me into Palmer and all. What is it? Well... I find myself party to a certain mutual attraction. And the other parties here at school. Actually, I've already considered this eventuality. Decided that since it might be awkward for you seeing a faculty member, it really wouldn't be any of my business. Unless, of course, it was one of your teachers, which I couldn't condone for all sorts of reasons. But if it's not one of your teachers, it isn't. Well, I don't see a problem. 
Semi Hannah Wilson. She's a student. Yep. Well, Alan. Well, our lockers are next to each other, and we kind of got friendly over the semester. I mean, she's a grade ahead of me, so, you know, she's of age. I just want to make sure you're cool with this. I suppose I, I am. I, 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 I guess. Well, I'll respect your wishes, whatever they are. I'll be honest, I'm not wild about the idea, but if Emmy Han is old enough to make her own decisions, I, I really don't see how I can say no to you guys. You sure? Yeah. You're really sure? Yeah. You're really, really sure? Alan. I was hoping you'd put the kibosh on things, and then I wouldn't have any reason to be so nervous. Because you're 27 years older than she is? I don't think that's the problem, but, you know, you start going out with someone, and... Well, it's been a long time since I've had a relationship. I can understand. I'm really, really kind of like, you know, freaking about it. I mean, feel my forehead. I'm sweating. Alan, if you're so uncomfortable, maybe you should talk to somebody. Oh. You know, someone to help you sort out whatever's going on. Do you have a close friend? Not really. Minister? Nah, me and organized religion's kind of at odds. How about a therapist? You mean a shrink? Look, let me give you the name of a guy I know. If you want to, you give him a call. I think he'd really like Murray. Give me a P! Give me an A! Give me an L! Give me an M! Give me an E! Give me an R! Go team! Yeah! Nice. We'll be getting back to you. Next is... Franny Bird. like this, I don't know how I'm going to be able to look in the mirror again. Hi, would anyone like to buy a girl a drink? Have a seat. I think my friend could use a little company. No, Murray, put what? your money away. I'm, I'm not interested. Murray, don't. Don't listen to me. Murray, excuse me. I'm really not interested. Which one of you allergic to pretty girls? I'm not in the mood to manufacture conversation with a stranger. So what do you do the talking? These girls are professional conversationalists, you know, and highly skilled ones at that. I know, I know. The show hasn't even started yet. Have another beer. I'm gonna have to take a rain check. A few minutes ago, you were having almost a good time, sort of. What happened? See the hostess over there? Pretty. A little too much eye makeup for me. She's one of my students. Agree that if you want to stay at Palmer, you're gonna have to quit that job. Why are you making such a big deal out of this? Kim, you're 16 years old. It's illegal for you to be in that bar, let alone work there. And I don't think the Lychee Tree Lounge is the best environment for a girl your age to be spending her evening. But it's okay for you to hang out there. We're not here to talk about Mr. Bird. We're talking about you. Look, the only thing we're allowed to do with the customers is talk to them. If anybody gets out of line, the bouncers throw them out. So just because I work in a hostess bar doesn't make me a prostitute. We're not suggesting that. 
But the fact remains is that you work in a place where alcohol is being served. That wasn't whiskey in my cocktail glass. It was iced tea. That's not the point. My uncle owns that bar, and two more others like it in Oahu. The money I earn there is what makes it possible for me to be in America. Isn't there another job you can get? Not that pays me two hundred a night. My uncle had to bribe the officials to let me leave my country. He paid my way here. He feeds me. He sends me here to school. And he's done the same thing for fifteen others in my family. Having us work for him in that club is the only way he can afford to do that. Kim, we understand the difficult position you're in. But try to look at it from our point of view. We can't ignore the laws of the land or the rules of the school. Now I haven't decided if I'm going to contact the police yet. But one thing I do know is I cannot allow you to stay at Palmer under these circumstances. Then I'll quit school. I hate to see you do that. I don't have any other choice. Kim. Kim. sure that we're doing the right thing here. Neither am I. But if we play fast and loose with her, we're going to have to do with every other student who comes in here on a disciplinary matter with a sob story. I know. But the poor kid's a victim. Well, should I call the police? If it'll help Kim. Oh, that I don't know. And it's hard to relate to a family who could exploit their kids like this. I'm sure guys like her uncle don't see it as exploitation. They've scraped together enough cash to get a hostess bar, brought the clan over from Thailand, Korea, Vietnam, wherever, Put him to work. Everyone's in America, so the assumption is everyone's got it made. I think I'll have a chat with her uncle. Well, what do you think, bro? She's fox. The hairdo, doofus. I get dreadlocks, then you never have to wash your hair ever again. May I please have my magazine back? Might this be yours? How many times do I have to tell you not to go into my room and take my stuff? Me? Invade your sacred chamber. Never would I do such a thing. If you don't believe me, just ask my faithful companion here. Never would he do such a thing. Give it. Oh. What do you think? Kind of, kind of me? Kind of now? If you did your hair like that, you'd look like a geek. Hey, congrats on making cheerleading. Thanks. Well, what changed your mind about going out for the squad? You were, you were pretty adamant with the old man. Yeah, but have you ever gotten into it with Dad and said a bunch of stuff just to irritate him? Got it. <laughs> also, I thought I'd be really good at cheerleading, and it feels good to be good at something. You actually said something sincere. I'm kind of touched. <laughs> <laughs> hey, stop. I haven't read that yet. Whoa, whoa. I'm just going to bring you to the barn. Oh, Harry, I'm telling Dad. It's not an article or anything. Dad! Okay, fine. Fine. Don't have a conniption, all right? If you really want a new look, why don't you just cut off your head? I thought cheerleaders were supposed to be cheery, didn't you? <sighs> Sam sent you to see me? Well, Mr. Bird gave me your name. And I gotta be straight with you, I wasn't gonna come. But then I got to thinking. See, I used to have this guru and I remembered how peaceful it felt sitting there with him, just watching him smoke. Your guru smoke? Two little wisps that curled up out of each ear. Little did we know, it was a harbinger of what was to come. And what was that? Spontaneous combustion. Poor Baba. I think basically I'm a fireproof person. So what's going on with you? Okay. I live alone. Just me, my guitar, my books, my computer, and nature. A pretty monastic existence. And I'm set in my routine. All of which means I don't know if I'm prepared to incorporate somebody else into my life. Is that something you have to do? No, but I want to ask this girl out. Going on a date doesn't mean she's moving in with you. Yeah, but one thing always leads to another. I mean, for the last few decades, I've had my life pretty much on hold. Then I decided to go back to school, which meant I had to start living in the world again. I had to get a phone so I could call the dean's office if I had the flu and was going to be absent. I had to get a computer 
which meant I had to rewire my shack. Then I had to start wearing underwear. I mean, it goes on and on, one new thing after another in my life. I want to take out Emihana, but where's that going to lead? I could end up being married. I think what you're talking about is how scary it is to change. Yeah, maybe so. The reason change is so scary is we think it'll kill us. That change will destroy who we are, or who we think we are. But the truth is, whether we like it or not, everything is always changing. So you might as well continue to let yourself experience new things. Hard, man. Alan, life isn't a tornado that sucks you up and drops you in some strange place. It's a dance, and you get to lead. My advice, don't get ahead of things. Take her out, see if you like her first. Then take it from there. Well, where should I take a girl on a date? Well, that, that depends on what kind of date is it. Well, it's a first date kind of date. I asked out Amy Hanna Wilson. Where'd it go? Well, I gotta tell you, I thought I was gonna throw up, but I got the words out. <laughs> you wanna papaya? Yeah, hey, if you're offering. Hey, Crystal and I, we're going to the movies in Ohio tomorrow night. You wanna, you wanna double date? Well, on school night, lines are too long on the weekend. What about homework? Just do it in study hall. Then I better start hitting the books. I got a big quiz coming up on the periodic table. Thanks, man. Sure. Hey, Alan. Did you ever, did you ever get sick of having long hair? No. Why? Why? I've just been thinking about cutting mine. Do not do it. Do not. How come? Oh, man. Your hair is your thoughts. And the longer it is, the smarter and more productive you become. I mean, your hair is like antenna that picks up the cosmic energy of the universe and channels it into here. If you cut it all off, you become like all the other short-haired simpletons sitting around watching sitcoms and eating instant food. Okay, uh, well, thanks for the advice. Hear me, Harry. Do not cut your hair. Hey, for this date, should I get the young lady a corsage? That's not necessary. What? Well, could we maybe do something a little more, I don't know, dynamic? You've been on the squad for like a day and you want to change the routine. Not change it, just liven it up a little. Make it more contemporary. Well, I like it the way it is. Okay, forget it. Wait, let's hear what she has to say. I was thinking that it might be neat to make formation changes. You know, like pickups. Some of us were hanging around last night after practice, fooling around, and we worked out some stuff. Can we show you? Go for it. Ready? Okay. Home, run. Home, run. Home, run. Grip, spin, flip, scar, hey. Push and turn. 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 Home, home, run. Home, home, run. Home, home, run. Grip, spin, flip, scar, hey. That looks so tough. And I tell you to have a blast. Here you are, the new kid on the squad, and they're already using your ideas. They respect your abilities. This is great. Yeah, I mean, everybody's pretty mellow, except for Beth and this other girl who doesn't like me. Lauren, somebody. She's probably just a little jealous. No, actually, I'm not the one she has a problem with. She's mad at you. Me? Well, you threw her best friend in the whole wide world out of school. Who? Kim Lee. Let me clarify something. I didn't throw Kim out. She chose to withdraw rather than comply with school policy. Dropping out of school is not my first choice for her. 
I don't even know the girl, but I guess Lauren and her are pretty tight. I'm sorry I had to get an earful. It's Lauren and she. <laughs> what? Well, Sonny, what is it? Harry! What about here? What do you do? What? Where's Harry? Hmm? Harry? Harry, okay? Go away. What's wrong, son? Please just leave me alone. Oh, okay. Well, open the door so we can talk. You're just gonna laugh. I won't laugh, I promise. Come on, open the door. Y your hair, uh... What happened? Well, in instead of getting it cut, I just wanted to get it up off my shoulders, so I, I permed it and something more or less went wrong and it frizzed. It's not funny. I'm sorry, son. I'm sorry. <laughs> Four cases of vodka, two cases scotch, one case taquita. Mr. Lee? On time, okay? Not like last week? Mr. Lee, I'm Sam Bird. I'm the headmaster of Palmer School. I'd like to talk to you about your niece. She don't go to that school no more. That's what I came to talk to you about. She probably told you we had a problem with her working here as a hostess. You mean I go work here? I was here the other night. I saw her sitting right at that table. No, no, no. You, uh, you thinking about another girl? Look, I understand you're trying to help your family. And in my opinion, the best way to do that is to keep Kim at Palmer. She's doing well there. She's got friends. She don't go there no more. Look, I gotta go. I got a lot of work to I'm do. I'm not trying to make trouble. If I wanted to do that, I would have already told the police that you have minors in here. So uh, I'd like to find a way to help Kim. But you're not making that very easy. Sorry, my uh, English is not so good. I don't want to see your niece forfeit her education. I can't imagine that you want that either. I want to talk to Kim. She don't live here no more. She go to Oahu, take care of sick auntie. No can talk now. I gotta go. Hi. Hey, how's it? Well, I was wondering if you could help me. Um, do you have the technology or whatever to relax permanence? Mm, it depends. I gotta see the perm. <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, come, come. No can do, brah. I put anything on there, they're gonna fall out. Well, isn't there anything you can do to help me get my life back? What? I think I just aced my math exam. It counts for 30% of my grade. I could fully get a B this semester. Oh, that's terrific, honey. Those math labs after school are paying dividends. So, what's up? The other day you mentioned a cheerleader friend of Kim Lee's who's upset with me. What? Uh, Lauren somebody. Yeah, uh, she's chilled out, though. Well, apparently Kim's moved away and I want to get a hold of her. Is there any chance Lauren knows how to reach her? I can find out. Okay. <laughs> hey. Way to go, Matt. Thanks. I'll see you at the game. Okay. <laughs>
tried to tell him, but he just wouldn't listen. I think it looks good. Really. Well, you know, I didn't have much choice. I mean, it was either cut it all off or walk around looking like a bright red toilet brush. <laughs> I said, Harry, <laughs> do not cut your hair. But he wouldn't listen. Alan, are you going to go on about this all night? No. Like Ginsburg said, old ways of probable and improbable universes. Everybody's right. Who said that? Alan Ginsberg, the poet, he wrote Howl. But that was the passage from Laughing Gas. I thought Jack London wrote Howl. I know, you're thinking of Call of the Wild. Ginsberg was like the father of the beat movement, which included some heavy cats like Ferlinghetti, Kerouac, Corso. They didn't just write poetry, they threw it up in the air. And when it came down, it was like different shapes, like... Walt Whitman did a century before. Do you have to write a paper on poetry or something? Nah, I'm just into it. Really? I tried reading poetry for fun once, but it was just too hard to understand. Maybe I should go shorter. How'd I look with a buzz? Harry, you're really sweet and kind of cute, but not quite cute enough to cut everything off and make your face do all the work. No offense. Good movie. Yeah. I'm really glad you asked me out. I wasn't sure you'd accept. Are you kidding? It's got a nice smile. You sing great. I really like your hair. You didn't know it's great? I've always gone out with older guys. I mean, when I was in third grade, my boyfriend was in fifth. When I was a frost, she was a senior. This is just a bigger age spread, that's all. Besides, you're young for your age. I mean... My parents are younger than you, and they're like so serious. They're all, turn down the music, I'm all chill. Even if I hooked up with someone my own age, years from now they could end up being completely tense. Oh, yeah. Hi, can I have uh, a rainbow and a lemon pineapple and two coconuts, please, all with the uh, azuki beans? Sure. They're kind of cute together. Uh, you know, my head is got to be at least 10 degrees cooler. I should have gone short a long time ago. Can you make sure the flavors on the rainbow don't run together? No problem. I to be able to taste them separately. <laughs> Perfect. You know, it's still kind of early. Maybe we could go for a walk on the beach. I want to see what it's like to have the trade winds against my neck. Sure. There Sounds you go. good. Great. Thank you. Hey, Alan, we're going to go eat our shave ice on the beach. You want to go? Alan? Alan? Father even carved this sounding board, and it's called uh, 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 Papakui Poi. Papakui Poi. Out of what kind of wood? Mm -hmm. Oh, he wood. Very good. And the pounder's made out of lava rock. I hope we'll make it too much noise with you. I was awake grading papers before the rooster got up to relieve himself. And you know what else? Poi is made from taro. And if you eat taro before it's cooked in the emo, you get an itchy throat. That's called. Pumaneo. Pumaneo. Ah. Want a taste? You know, I got a lecture on the sophist today. The last thing I need is an itchy throat. But this is mahu mahu. Poi has been cooked once. Left in ice box and then cooked some more. Pretty yummy, huh? I must be a terminal holly. I can't quite decide if this tastes like letter size or legal size file folders. You don't know what you're missing, Mr. Bird. Some la la, some poyan. I'm sure it's Ono. Plenty Ono. And you know what else Sonny says? Hmm. When there's a bowl of poyan on the table, no one's allowed to argue. Really? Well, in that case, I think the whole family should cultivate a taste for poyan. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs> Go get dressed for school. Good morning, honey. Sleep well? You know, I had this 
weird dream about Todd. We were marching at a Nine Inch Nails concert, and I got knocked down. And, and so I reached out for Todd to pull me up, but he had moshed off into the crowd. I never saw him again. Oh, um, here's the number where Kim Lee works oh. in Honolulu. Lauren called with it last night, and I forgot to give it to you. Thanks. Sorry I have a bad dream. You know what? Actually, it's okay. Now I have something to talk about today with Dr. Rubenstein. Mm -hmm. I was afraid I'd run out of things. <laughs> See ya. Flight over. There's some things I wanted to discuss with you in person. You said what you had to say the other day in your office. My position hasn't changed. But the other day I gave you an either-or situation. And what I should have done was work with you on a solution that would have allowed you to stay in school. Since then I've come up with some ideas. Oh yeah, I can't with her, won't you? We're in the middle of something here. You're gonna talk to her, you gotta pay. You have a full scholarship to Palmer if you want it. What do you want to have? Nothing. There's a two drink for me anyway. Just keep the money. I have to work for my uncle. I already told you. I have to. I know you have to pay him back all that money for the wonderful things he's done for you. And he can work after school. Or filing or something. You'll eventually pay him back. You're asking me to leave this place. You're asking me to leave my family. I believe that family is the most important thing in a person's life. But the purpose of a family is to nurture, to help that person grow and to flourish, to realize their potential, not to exploit them, to keep them down. It's not like that. Isn't it? Thanks for a drink. You better get the table 12. I was waiting for you. I had a really nice time last night. Well, I'm sorry I crashed on you. That's okay. Listen, there's a party Friday night at Junior Dudois. Wanna go? I don't think it'd be a good idea. Why not? Well, after I fell asleep and you guys brought me home, I woke up and I spent the rest of the night chewing on things. So I started tossing the I Ching. Our hexagram doesn't look too rosy. What do you mean? Well, the cow hexagram shows a woman bold and strong, but the third nine undivided indicates a man that's had the skin stripped from his buttocks. He walks in peril with great difficulty, all of which means our relationship's going nowhere, Anihana. It's right there on the ground. What are you saying? You don't want to see me anymore because of your butt? My butt is just a symbol. Call it the divine plan. Call it the wheel of all things. The point is, you can't argue with faith. I don't believe in faith. All right, let me put it another way. I'm too old for you. I told you, I don't think you're too old for me. Listen to me, Hannah, know why I crashed last night? I mean, I can't stay up late like I used to. I mean, you guys are going strong at midnight. Me? I'm drooling on my pillow at 9.30. I don't care. I do. I mean, I don't want to be the sleepy, boring, tired old hippie in a relationship. You were 
really good today. Thanks, so are you. Can you help me with my fan kick some time? Sure. Anybody want to pick up litter for extra credit? Litter? Oh, thanks. <laughs> We're going to meet some guys for pizza. Do you want to come? Sure, but i got to ask my dad. Oh, wait. Okay. Wait. <laughs> You guys sure know how to draw a crowd, and you, young lady, were magnificent. Thanks. Oh, oh, yeah. Hey, can I go get some pizza with some friends? Okay, but be home right after dinner. You got homework. Okay. Okay. Sean, a little help? Throw these in the back of my car, will ya? Good hustle today. Sunny. Yeah, first in the long line of one. We're playing a team next week that's just going to eat us alive. But that's next week. Listen, i got to swing by my office. Can I walk into your car? Thanks. Pretty fair-sized crowd. Yeah, for a change. We even got the dean to show up. It's important to support your team. Yeah. And I wanted to check out these cheerleaders. Yeah, you and everybody else. They were something, weren't they? Yeah, well, Ashley Gilwatt and I became senior got him. Yeah, I heard he was holding court in the faculty lounge. Going on about harlots or something? Strumpet. So he enlisted you as the morality police? Yes. For the record? I think their routines are great. I think their uniforms have a lot more color. Well, they shake their hips a little, but so what? That's what the good Lord Gabriel tips for. I mean, not that my opinion matters or anything. I mean, I'm just a slam ball waiting for the next bachelor party. <laughs> well, their dancing is a lot more provocative. And it's about time. I mean, here we are in the birthplace of the hula, and for years we've had cheerleaders that look like robots with pom-poms. It was embarrassing. <laughs> I'm going to tell Gil Watanabe to get a life. Good. How'd everything go in the room? I said my piece. I hope she listened. I don't know. It's kind of hard for a kid like that to hear you. I mean, where she comes from, it's all about duty and denial. Especially for a girl. Well, Coach, can I buy you a cold one to celebrate? Oh, I'm so beat. A libation might put me right under the table. Of course, I can think of a lot worse places to land than on the floor gazing at those sins of yours. Why are you guys always such guys? Because we're guys, and you love us. Take a rain check. <laughs> oh, my God. afternoon flight. I'd like to come back here to school, if that's okay. You got it. I don't have a place to live. We'll find you one. In the meantime, there's an extra room for you at our house. You like ahi? Good. We're throwing some on the barbecue for dinner tonight. A little salad, some corn from the garden maybe, poi. I hope you brought your appetite. to a very secret place, which is only known by me, which is why it's a secret. And then, I'm gonna bury it, like a time capsule. And then maybe one day, me and the grandkids will go dig it up. Why? Well, because then it'll be like hair from another time. They'll be really into it. You know how kids are. Besides, I couldn't just leave it on the barber shop floor and you know, get all mixed in with everybody else's hair. A barber lets you keep it? Well, yeah. I mean, just because he cuts it doesn't mean that he owns it. You know, I was thinking about a Viking funeral, but nothing smells worse than burning hair, so when I came up with the idea for this time capsule thing. Do you think we'll always live in Hawaii? Well, anything's possible. I mean, a lot can happen over a lifetime. If I put in this note, I think I'll never make it back. It's weird to imagine you with grandkids being old and all. Yeah. Well, I guess getting old is something that just happens, you know. Unless something else happens first. I can't think about you dying. I know. I'm off. Wait, Harry. Oh, can I come with you? I won't tell anybody where you bury your hair. I promise. Sure. We'll be the, the brotherhood of hair. And then one day when you cut your hair off, you can go and bury it there too. I'm never cutting my hair off. Not even if I get elected president or something. Hey, when we get back, 
We could tell Fanny we know the secret location, and she doesn't. How that be mean? But we like being mean, though. I think you're confusing being mean with teasing. See, teasing's okay. Being mean is making somebody feel bad. You know, Fanny feel bad if we told her that. Yeah, I guess so. See, this brotherhood thing, it's, it's, it's between us, because, you know, we're brothers. Having a brother's a very cool thing, right? Yeah. I'm really glad you're my brother. Now, right back at you, little bro. Well, I better get a move on if I want to get back before it gets dark. Let's go, Heidi. Where are we going to take it? Well, it's going to be someplace special. Over there, at the foot of the tallest peak. The brotherhood of hair is marching over there. <laughs> we are the brothers in the brotherhood of hair. An all new episode. Amherst College has offered me the chairmanship of their philosophy department. Are you going to take the job? Are the birds leaving paradise? I don't want to move to a new place. He's not going to move us if we don't want to go. I came in here to tell you that I'm announcing my resignation. The kids, they want to leave. But do they really want to go? And now it's our turn to give up something for him. Don't you think? Goodbye, away. An all-new Birds of Paradise, next Thursday at 8, 7 Central, here on ABC. This is Lisa McCree. And Charles Gibson. Tomorrow, three of the men who walked on the moon will enter the Astronauts Hall of Fame. Plus, Jack Hanna and a song from Kibo Bryson, tomorrow on Good Morning America. Here on ABC. Next, stay tuned for Primetime Live.